So hi, Christina. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining New York. And I know for you it's morning. And as yes. you know, uh, the first question is, tell us about yourself and what you do. Sure. Uh, I'm Christina. I live in Manhattan in New York City on the Upper West Side near Central Park. And I love it. Uh, I've lived in the city for about 12 years now. Um, my husband, then um, boyfriend, and I moved here after college. We lived in Chicago and we moved here um, together, both of us to sort of live out our New York dreams and we're doing it. So it's very exciting. Um, I have worked in advertising for my entire career. I went to school actually at Originally, I thought I was going to be a psychologist, mm -hmm. and I loved studying psychology, and then I realized that I really was not excited by any of the applications of a psychology degree, so I had a little bit of a panic, and I went to my professor and asked, and she was like, well, have you thought about marketing? And I hadn't, um, so I switched my major, and I did a marketing degree. Um, and then I've been in media ever since. I worked in um, Chicago, like I said, for a year at a smaller sort of independent agency. And then I came to New York and I worked on Starbucks as my first client here in the city. I worked on UPS in sort of a global capacity. I worked on the Samsung global team, which I loved. It was very challenging, but I loved doing that in a sort of global strategy capacity. Um, and now I've been at Wavemaker, which is part of the Group M family for about two years. And I'm a client lead and I work with clients. We call them new economy or fast growth mm -hmm. clients. Um, and what that means is they are pre-IPO or even sometimes pre-revenue companies that are starting to advertise with like maybe the big dogs for the first time. Nice. Um, so First time working with an agency, first time often working with brand media, um, and I really love that. It's very it's very different than working with some of the bigger, like McDonald's and um, CPG companies. They need very different things. They work at a very different pace, um, and so I really love that. So I manage a few teams that work with several different clients in that space. Um, in the U.S. So you need to educate them really about the process and what to do. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. Absolutely. And it's, you know, pros and cons. There's a lot of education, but we can create good habits. <laughs> so that's <laughs> always nice. Um, and I think they are very, they are much closer to the decision to have brought in an agency. So they are much more aware of what the agency is bringing to the table that they don't already have. Um, and so they, they, you know, we talk, we use the word partner all the time in agency world, um, but they are much more likely to actually view us as a partner because they brought us in for a reason that they don't have endless budget. So they are choosing to spend their budget on having an agency to support them. And so often that relationship I find is much more of a two way street. Reward than some of the other relationships of like yeah. client agency that I've been in. So what's yeah. your main motivator for doing uh, that role or being in New York? And uh, This question sort of made me think a little bit. Um, it's not a question I've been asked before. And I do sort of, you know, we do agency training for when new people come in. And I, I often do those sessions with sort of the newer people that come in because I find find it very inspiring. And I find the sort of excitement for the industry um, helps me get excited about it again. I've never been asked about my motivation. So this one made me think a little bit. Um, I think it's changed over time. Um, I think I had sort of about being in New York City, I had always sort of thought I might move to New York City. But when it actually happened, it was a little bit earlier than I thought. So it's just all very exciting. Um, for a long time, it's been the ability to be around people that are more similar to me. And you know this, I grew up in the Midwest, mm. um, but I grew up with parents who are not from the U.S. 
Um, I grew up traveling a lot. I grew up speaking different languages and I have found those people here in New York City. Um, and I got to work with a lot of them, especially on the Samsung business. We were traveling all over the place and it just, um, it felt very nice to be around people that were like me in that way. Um, and I very much am fueled by sort of having the what if conversations, which is why it's very nice to be with clients now in the position that I'm in that, you know, what if we could do this? What if we could do that? What if, you know, Coca-Cola is doing this, but we're going to do it differently. Like just in those sort of strategic dreaming conversations, um, that's, that's really what motivates me and gets me excited about like what I do every day. Longing in New York and also a lot of creativity. Definitely. Definitely. And I would, you know, I, Sorry, I have responsibilities I now. What can you do with a puppy? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Mine's out there probably making noise as well. Yeah, I did um, put them out, but now they're back. <laughs> and what do you think I, are your top qualities, Christina? What are my top qualities? Um, I think I have very little ego. And mm -hmm. I think that's really important as we move through our spaces. Um, I really do think a good idea can come from anywhere. Um, but at the same time, I don't like to sit and waffle forever. I like to come out of a meeting and have a clear, here's who's going to do what. We're going to come back in this amount of time. We're going to regroup. I like to sort of then have clear next steps and clear to do's. And I like to guide my team that way. So we're not just sort of like, yes, the creativity and the ideation is so much fun, but then we need to actually go and accomplish things yeah, based yeah. off of that. And I think also I would say my top, one of my top qualities, and this has only come recently, I would say, um, as I've gotten more comfortable, I think, and more confident in my knowledge in this space, is I really do bring my full self to work. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think, I think it's important for my team to see me showing up that way. My teams to see me leave when I need to leave. My teams to see when I am really buckled in and and staying and getting things done. Um, but I think it's important. I think it's important for me to show up that way for my own mental health. But I think it's also important for my teams to see me do that as well. Nice. And what are you most proud of to date? Um, a few things. I'm I'm most proud of the fact that that I've gotten to travel for my work. That mm -hmm. I'm the person that gets sent to do things. That I'm the right person for those for those jobs and for those um, for those meetings. It's obviously afforded me some incredible opportunities I wouldn't have had otherwise. Just inability to travel to places I wouldn't have gone otherwise and meet people that I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, but I'm really proud that, that I'm often that person because I love that. Um, there are some like really tactical things like for Samsung, for one of their phone launches, we took over almost every single out of home screen in Times Square. Um, that was a so, so, so much work, but it like to actually see it happen um, was amazing. So I'm really proud. Like that was a few years ago now, but the fact that we did that was really awesome. Um, and I'm proud that my team gives me the feedback that, that I want, because I work hard at being a good leader and being there for my team and being a good teacher. Um, and so to see that they're giving me that feedback back, that they're recognizing that I'm putting that effort in, uh, I'm very proud of that. And any pitfalls on the way? And how did you navigate them? So any things that you wouldn't mention on your CV? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So my first, I think my first job in New York City, I, I probably wasn't in the right role. I sort of took a role to come to New York City and I sort of took the first one that, that, that was presented to me. I learned a lot, uh, but I probably wasn't in the right role. And I really, I thought I was too good for the work that 
that was being done. Um, and I didn't, I didn't do very well in that role. I left quickly. So I recognized that I left quickly, but I definitely burned a couple of bridges, um, with some of my management, um, in that role. And it's tough because would I do it again? I, I don't know that I would know to do differently. Like I had that experience and that was an important experience for me. Um, okay, so I don't know that I, I would I don't do what get you. back. Yeah, no, don't do that because I think everything happens for a reason and it was your path. Yeah. Like this whole thing yeah. of what if or we should have, you know, yeah. just, just, you know. No, I think it was an important lesson for me to learn. It was also very important. It set me sort of along the right path in terms of the type of role that I wanted within, even within the media industry, um, because I was very clear, like, oh, no, I don't want, I don't want that again. I want this instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it set me on the right path. Um, but, but yeah, mistakes were made <laughs> for sure. For and sure. What are your top tips for other women? Um, my top tips for other women, I would say don't be too good for something. <laughs> I think, I think it's coming straight out of that. Like yeah. I, um, I think there are roles when, especially when you're starting out where it seems like you're doing busy work and your scheme seems like you're doing things that aren't important and actually is incredibly important. Um, and, and I try to tell my team that now, like, and I think again, part of That's having gone through that. Sure. My daughter is coming back from boarding school. Oh. Loud. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So don't I, sell yourself short. Yeah. Don't don't do things where, where you know you could do better. Yeah, but also don't be like there's a reason, especially when you're more junior in the industry, you have to learn some of those fundamentals and it might feel boring and it might feel like you're not contributing, but you actually really are. Um, so I often, again, I tell my my junior team members that what they're doing is actually really important because it actually is like if, you know, data processing and Excel spreadsheets and stuff doesn't feel exciting, but it actually is really fundamental to what we do. And you have to learn those things in order to be able to progress and you also have to do those things so that the rest of the team can use what you've built to move things forward so it actually is incredibly important to the team um my other tip and I guess again I would say I've learned this over time so I think it's easier said than done um is like let people see who you are at work don't don't be afraid obviously you can't you can't always if you're a more junior person on the team, you can't always skip out when work needs to be done if there's other things that are potentially happening. Um, but, you know, especially in media, when we are talking about reaching the diverse America that exists today, at least for us in the U.S., um, we, we benefit and we value from the group having diverse opinions from from anybody that comes into the room. So if you feel comfortable, let us have those opinions. Like we want to hear from that, or I want to hear from them. I want to hear that anyway. I Unfortunately, I know not all senior leadership and not all team leaders are the same, which is very unfortunate, but, but I am that way. Mm -hmm. nice. And my last tip would be assume positive intent in anybody. I think we get very bogged down and well they did this to me and they did that and this email feels weird and until proven otherwise because sometimes it's not but until proven otherwise I would say assume positive intent and assume someone is doing something unintentionally or moving too quickly or mm. maybe not paying as much attention as they should but it's not intentional yeah. it is unintentional that's nice so plans, goals, dreams for the future. Last question. Yeah. Um, it's tough because I've sort of just gotten into, I've, uh, this has been a big learning role for me in terms of work. 
Um, and so I feel like I've just gotten to a place where I'm a little bit more comfortable and I feel like I can actually like say what's next because I've been very much sort of like figuring out where I am currently. Um, so I don't really know. I don't know. People ask like, is agency leadership for me? I don't know about that. That Come feels on, you very... walk the talk. You had time <laughs> to think about the next five years. You can't give well, me that now. <laughs> well, what what you know is that actually Walk the Talk brought up a lot for me in terms of whether I actually want to maybe take a little bit of a step back in career. I don't have children now, whether I want to maybe have children, um, which I think will require me to take a step back. Um, I have I have elderly parents. Um, so I do think probably in the next five years, definitely leaving New York City is probably in the cards. And sort of, I know how I need to figure out how I make that feel not like I'm giving up or not like I am stepping back from something. I need to figure out what that means in terms of um, making that just as aspirational as moving to New York was. So I, I'm not sure I'm quite there yet, but yeah. Lovely. Well, yeah. thank you, Christina. Of course. Thank you. Thanks Very nice time. to hear from you. And you know, uh, She Can is, is really a platform where we tell our stories so that other women can be inspired or, you know, hear things that they normally wouldn't hear. And, and it's I a love that. platform. Yeah. Have you been on it? Have you had it, had it checked it out? I haven't, but I will. Yeah, I will now. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. So thank you for yeah. your time. And thank you for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure.